Welcome back. Begin with our coverage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The first grain ship to leave a Ukrainian port since the Russian invasion passed through the Bosphorus after an inspection today. The carrier Rizzoni left Odessa on the Black Sea early on Monday, carrying 26,526 tons of corn to Lebanon's Tripoli. It anchored at the entrance of the Bosphorus Strait yesterday night. The sailing was made possible after Ankara and the United Nations brokered a grain and fertilizer export agreement between Moscow and Kyiv last month, a rare diplomatic breakthrough in a drawn-out war of attrition. The ship entered the Bosphorus Strait following the completion of an inspection by Russian, Ukrainian, Turkish and UN personnel working at a joint coordination center in nearby Istanbul. Ukraine's infrastructure ministry has also confirmed completion of the inspection and said it had 17 more vessels loaded with agricultural products that were awaiting approval to set sail. The Rizzoni is expected to arrive in Tripoli in four or five days. And Ukraine, uh, Ukraine has asked Lebanon's top prosecutor to reopen a probe into a ship Kiev says was carrying stolen grain that remains docked in Lebanon pending a seizure order. Ukraine says the Syrian flagship in the northern Lebanese port of Tripoli is carrying some 10,000 tons of flour and barley plundered by Russia following its February invasion. Ukraine's ambassador to Lebanon, Ihor Ostash, told a news conference that the embassy near Beirut that the request to investigate further was based on new evidence gathered by a Ukrainian judge and was handed over to Lebanon on Monday. The Lebanese prosecutor, Gassin Odats, lifted the first seizure order at the Lodicia ship he had issued last week after finding no criminal offense committed. But he remains unable to sail until at least Thursday due to another order from a judge in Tripoli. As Moscow you know, has previously uh, denied stealing grain. Russia's embassy in Lebanon said it had no information on the cargo. On the An official from the company that owns the cargo has also denied it was stolen and said the ship would sail to nearby Syria should it be allowed to leave. As you know, uh, General Prosecutor already closed the criminal case. Uh, based on uh, some uh, research and uh, investigation. But today we have uh, much more uh, documents, much more proofs, much more evidences. And we, we already sent to the Prosecutor General official request to reopen, renew this criminal case. It's very important to understand. It's uh, Ukrainian cargo, Razoni, Razoni, which, which was loaded with 26,000 of corn is going from Odessa to seaport of Tripoli. In a legal way, non-stolen, original Ukrainian grains. And uh, we will expect uh, this uh, Ukrainian grains maybe in five, six, seven, four, five days. And at the Romanian Black Sea port of Constanta, dockers have worked for months to ship out Ukrainian grain in addition to their usual loads from Romania and its landlocked neighbors. The grain which is poured onto conveyor belts in Constanta terminals makes the air smell sweet and covers workers seeking shade under the steel silos. The silos, rather. The export route is one of the few left open to Ukraine, which before the conflict with Russia was one of the world's top grain suppliers. Exporters have shipped 1.46 million tons of Ukrainian grain through Constanta since Russia invaded the country in February and the war halted shipments from Ukraine's own Black Sea ports. The first grain carrying ship to leave the Ukrainian port of Odessa since the war began was already and many more are planned. But operators in Romania expect they will still have a part to play in transporting Ukrainian grain as it will take time to fully implement that deal. And the Ukrainian, rather Russian, defense ministry has said that a depot of foreign arms near the city of Lviv in Ukraine has been destroyed in a missile strike. The depot in western Ukraine housed weapons supplied by Poland. However, it isn't clear what type of weapons were being carried in the depot. 
The defense ministry said in a statement that air launched high precision long range missiles near the city of Radikiv in Lviv region, destroyed a storage base with foreign made weapons and ammunition delivered to Kyiv regime from Poland. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has blamed Moscow for delays in the return of a gas turbine vital for the Nord Stream 1 pipeline. European governments have accused Russia of reducing gas supplies on spurious pretexts in revenge for Western sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine. The turbine had been serviced in Canada but has since then stranded in Germany in an escalating energy standoff between the two countries. The senior manager at the Russian giant, uh, gas giant Gazprom said that delivery of the turbine to Germany after the maintenance work had been completed was not in line with the contract. What is important to me is to make clear that this turbine can be deployed at any time and it can be used. There is nothing standing in the way of its onward transport to Russia except the Russian buyers have to indicate that they also want the turbine and provide the necessary information for the customs. All other approvals have been obtained. So there are no reasons why this delivery cannot take place. And to demonstrate that, to understand that, and to show that is one of the reasons why I am very grateful that I was able to look at this with my own eyes today, and also to be able to show everyone that there is nothing mystical going on. In a sense, it is clear and simple. The turbine is here. It can be delivered. Someone just has to say, I want it, and it will be there very quickly. And then, this doesn't stand in the way of further transportation of gas through the pipeline. But in response, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov says Russia's gas bomb is awaiting documents that will allow the return of the serviced Nord Stream 1 gas turbine from Germany. Russia's cut gas supplies via the Nord Stream 1, a key route feeding Europe with Russian gas. The Nord Stream 2 pipeline has been finished but has not been put into use due to Russia's sending troops to Ukraine and subsequent wide-reaching sanctions. And Russia's Supreme Court has designated Ukraine's Azov Regiment as a terrorist group. But the wife of Azov's soldier imprisoned in Olenivka, Alina, says that the UN and the Red Cross refuse to fulfill their responsibilities. Alina hopes Russia's verdict won't affect the lives of Ukrainian uh, persons, uh, uh, prisoners of war, and that all of them will return home. Russia has regularly cited Azov in support of its assertion that Ukraine is controlled by fascists. Uh, Russian state propaganda has compared Azov fighters to World War II era Nazis, whose defeat by the Soviet Union remains a core part of Russian national identity. Well, as the Russia-Ukraine war enters its 161, 61st day, let's take a look at the main developments. Viewers, Anna Chernikova joins me now from Kyiv. Hi, Anna. It's good to see you. What's Kyiv's reaction to the Azov regiment situation? Uh, good evening. Uh, well, yesterday, um, uh, as you already mentioned, Russian court uh, announced um, Azov regiment uh, as a terrorist organization. Uh, this decision um, is taking place, is taking uh, orders straight away. So basically what it means is that um, uh, according to, again, to the Ukrainian in, in intelligence and to Azov regime and represent, representatives as well, this would definitely um, create difficulties uh, for the exchange of, of these soldiers who are the part of uh, Azov. I just would like to remind that Azov um, is basically, so it's not a separate unit. It's uh, a unit under the one, under one of the battalions of the National Guard of Ukraine. So uh, it, was, uh, it was reformed uh, back in 2014 or 15. And uh, at one point they became a part of the National Guard. So Ukrainian intelligence uh, just highlight that 
they are not terrorists, but they are a part of the National Guard. This is what they basically un uh, said in response. Um, uh, also, Azov regime reacted um, to this uh, allegation by uh, Russian side, and they said that uh, this decision was taken by Russia uh, in order to uh, basically hide their war crimes um, and uh, hide the torture that uh, they did to the soldiers in Olenivka. And basically they call the, the tragedy in Olenivka a terrorist act. Uh, by Russia. Um, what we know also from the uh, from the Ukrainian uh, intelligence, and this also was confirmed by the Institute for the Study of War, uh, this strategy uh, looks pretty much like the explosion on the site. It's, it was not a hit by the rocket or something. So uh, basically, these allegations um, well, it could be it could be seen uh, in this particular way that uh, probably. Uh, Russia's, Russian side is uh, well trying to you know create difficulties in terms of the exchange of the soldiers. At least this is the position of the Ukrainian side. So, and we will definitely see what's going to happen. But uh, again, um, Ukraine consider uh, all prisoners of war located in Olenivka as Ukrainian army soldiers. Some of them are from the Ukrainian armed forces. Some of them are national guards. But all this is basically Ukrainian army. And uh, there are no separate units uh, that took place uh, in the fightings. We'll continue to follow that uh, development. Banana, the Razoni, the first grain uh, carrying ship to leave Ukrainian ports in wartime, uh, safely anchored off Turkey's coast on Tuesday. This has to be good news in Ukraine. What's the reaction been? Uh, it's definitely a very positive sign that uh, finally. Uh, 26 tons of grain uh, has left Ukraine and uh, now is on the way and almost and soon will be reaching the destination. Uh, it's definitely a positive sign. We know from the Ukrainian officials that another 16 ships are waiting to, um, uh, to get out from uh, Odessa and um, uh, to, to enter this safe green corridor. Um, these ships are supposed to carry uh, a lot more um, products and different kind of products. Uh, and basically, uh, Ukraine is looking forward to actually renew uh, the, uh, the, the shipments uh, from now on. Again, uh, a lot of still a lot of people, including officials and uh, those who particularly involved in these shipments, uh, they still are very careful with any predictions because still um, it's no 100% um, you know, assurance that this is going to be safe and no provocations would be uh, in place. But still, for the moment, we know that sometime soon these 16 ships uh, will be uh, also um, leaving the port of Odessa. Uh, at least Ukrainian side said that they are ready. So um, for sure, positive sign for the whole world, for Ukraine. Uh, hopefully, uh, this would be not the, the first and last successful case. Hopefully, the first and next uh, ships would also be uh, out and uh, reaching their destinations. Dana, safety is one thing. Another thing is that a number of people have hinted at the deal between Ukraine and Russia, and this is for the grain exports, that it may offer a way forward to a possible ceasefire in the five-month conflict. On the part of the Ukrainians, is that a possibility? What are you hearing? For Ukraine, it's definitely not a possibility. We hear that a Russian side were trying to Again, we, we cannot, you know, independently verify this information. We can only get what we uh, information that we receive from, receive from the official um, uh, sources. But according to those who were present at the uh, at these negotiations before the agreement uh, between Ukraine, UN, Turkey, uh, and Russia, UN, Turkey was was signed. So we're signed. Um, it, 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 so we have information that Russian side were trying to somehow add certain additional points and we know that to, to the agreement and we know that Ukrainian side uh, did not accept anything that could be connected to any ceasefire or uh, anything um, except of grain safety shipment. So uh, for Ukraine, it's not an option. And the Ukrainian president was saying this before the agreement was signed, the agreements were signed. And uh, uh, 
uh, and still uh, continue to, you know, to uh, highlight this when he is asked this question. Um, Ukraine uh, continues certain counter uh, offensive actions uh, in the area of Kherson region. So uh, it doesn't seem that um, this, so this agreement definitely for Ukraine is not going uh, in line with any ceasefire. To think that also we heard the former German Chancellor say that um, uh, he's, he's an ally of Putin and he said that Moscow wants to negotiate a solution to the conflict. Um, let's talk about what we heard yesterday. Russia saying that the US uh, was directly involved in the conflict. Um, prior to this, they've always said it's involved via uh, proxy in the proxy war uh, with Russia. Um, and it said this because the US spies were approving and coordinating Ukrainian missile strikes on Russian forces. Has there been a response from the Ukrainian government? Uh, well, the Ukrainian government ha uh, has previously confirmed that uh, there is, um, you know, um, uh, there is basically um, coordination between the intelligences, but it was nothing about, uh, so it was nothing uh, to talk uh, in terms of uh, you know, giving orders. Uh, orders are given by the Ukrainian general staff and Ukrainian army uh, high, high officials uh, in terms of uh, U.S. and other international partners' uh, involvement. Uh, it's about, um, well, supplies, uh, help in this, uh, in, the, in the content of supplies, military supplies, uh, intelligence, cooperation, we know about that. Uh, and it's uh, not uh, it's not a secret. Uh, it's uh, well public information that uh, intelligence is not only U.S. intelligence, but uh, other international partners' intelligence. All, uh, they are all cooperating and helping. I mean, helping Ukraine, like sharing information, uh, and Ukrainian intelligence doing the same. So uh, it's not uh, well. We don't have any confirmations of uh, orders given by any other country uh, or any other military um, officials uh, rather than Ukrainian. Finally, Anna, just before we let you go, um, on the front lines, what else is happening and where? Uh, well, um, I should say that um, it's, the situation can, is quite tough, uh, tough still, especially uh, if we talk about Mykolaiv region, which is under constant fire and very intensive fire. Uh, and unfortunately, today, um, another attack, a rocket attack by Russia w was uh, conducted and uh, a lot of civilians suffered in Mykolaiv and actually they suffer every day, unfortunately. And I should say that Mykolaiv is probably one of the most um, uh, shout places for the moment in Ukraine. Uh, this also includes uh, Donetsk region and Kharkiv region. The uh, situation remains quite, uh, well, quite difficult there as well. Uh, however, we, we see, and also it was confirmed by President Zelensky himself and also by uh, international and Ukrainian intelligence and Institute for Study of War, that Russian forces are actually moving a lot of their troops from uh, east, from Donbas area to Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. Uh, this in terms of, in order to strengthen their position there. So basically they're getting ready for uh, for the defense, because Ukrainian army continue it continues its uh, counteroffensive actions uh, in the area. So uh, we will see again what's going to happen uh, there. But um, for the moment, this this is basically the main front line hotspots uh, that we can uh, that we can see. Have a lot for us there from Kiev. Thank you. Thank you. And as the world's largest soft drinks producers reduce their exposure to China, Chernogolovka boss Natalia Saknina says the company is hoping to win a 50% share of the $9 billion market. Ms. Saknina says Chernogolovka is more than doubling the size of its business this year and expects to reach 30% market share within two years from around 8.5% at the end of 2021. The scramble to win market share highlights the unexpected boom for Russian businesses and entrepreneurs created by the mass exodus of Western firms due to sanctions and restrictions over Russia's actions in Ukraine. According to data provider Statista, revenue in 
Russia's non-alcoholic drinks market amounts to $8.8 billion. PepsiCo Incorporated suspended soda production sales in Russia in March, one of the many consumer brands to curtail operations after Russia sent troops into Ukraine. Coca-Cola Company also suspended operations in March. In June, it said bottler Coca-Cola HBC AG and its existing customers in Russia were depleting stock. Both companies' carbonated drinks remain available to buy in Russia, but now, uh, for now, that is, but are expected to disappear over time, leaving an opportunity for local manufacturers to step in.